Why should anyone be led by you? Notice your response to that. This is an exercise video. Um, first exercise is you might say, well, they shouldn't, and I'm nothing, and I'm worthless. That's going to be a problem for your leadership. Another problem is, is more like the arrogance one is like, because well, I'm me, because what, what the fuck? Why would anyone not be led by me? Come on, I'm awesome. Notice if that's your response, and maybe in a joking way, but be honest with yourself. What was your response? Was it confusion? Was it, well, illogical? You know, was it emotional? Because I'd love you to, please be led by me. I need you to be led by me. It's not very compelling either, is it? Begging. Um, so why should anyone be led by you? I want you to, again, do this either written or with a partner. Either works, but not just in your own head. That's a rule of thumb for a lot of exercises. Write down, why should anyone be led by you? Is it your um, experience and qualifications, your competence in a particular field? Is it your general intelligence? Uh, is it your ethics? Is it your character traits? There's four that you might want to look at because you pretty much need all four of those for any form of leadership. You need a certain kind of competence, which is domain specific, intelligence, which isn't so domain specific. Obviously, there's, you know, leaders should be ethical, that's key, and, and some kind of character traits that make you suitable for being a leader. Um, we could also say something like a fifth one, something like our role in the community, like our experience, how that's led, how you're already respected. Um, there's others, right? So that's just five to get you started. Um, notice which come quickly. Is it the skills or the character traits, for example? You know, um, Notice if there's any of that disowning your greatness or equally inflating your greatness or making the specific things more general. Why should anyone be led by you? And this is a harsh question in a way, but it's, it's very fair. And I think we need to own that and know that deeply in ourselves if we've got any chance of people following us, if we've got any chance of being leaders in any sense. We need to be like, well, you know, why should anyone be led by me and say in the embodiment field? Well, I've got this level of experience. Um, you know, I'm rated very highly by competent people. You know, I've had people who are 20 year coaches rate me and my skills and say, this is amazing. Um, you know, I love it. I'm passionate about it. Uh, I am a smart person. Um, you know, I've built the embodiment conference and written books on the topic. If you Google it now, this, this th things I could give him. The tone here is not so much like justifying oneself. Um, but being knowing, it's like a, a secure knowing that I have these traits, skills, positions, etc., experience that, that means I'm secure in myself. That means that when I walk into a room, I know that and I own that. And I don't need to tell everyone, right? Like, you know, truly powerful people don't have to tell people they're powerful. Truly sexy women don't have to tell everyone they're sexy or men, right? It's like it's the same with leadership, just that inner knowing, that inner owning of those traits, competencies, etc. Um, and sometimes it's good to be remind yourself if you're having a sort of self-esteem problem, for example. Uh, yeah, very, very useful skill. And, you know, your leadership's always up for challenge. Where even if people work in a company and you employ them, they might still start not thinking about you as a leader, even if, you, you know, you've given them a job and they, they want to keep the money coming in. So um, it's always up for challenge and never rest on your laurels, never rest on the fact, well, because I'm the boss or because I'm me. So I'm the boss of my company, but whether people see me as a leader in that company or not, that goes up and down. My stock goes up and down. So I need to keep asking that question, not just, you know, I can say, well, I'm a manager and I get to make this decision, but that's a power structure. That's not really a, an emotional giving of leadership. I mean, this is very natural. Like I was around a lot of dogs at the weekend and even dogs will look at you like, are you the leader or not? Or am I the leader? Kids, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a parent, a kid will still look at you like, should I be following you right now? And there's a certain amount of trust that you'll get from past experiences. You know, that's, that's what trust is. It's a sense of like, okay, I've had enough past experiences with you to guess that what you're doing is a good move now. But when that starts to get a bit dented, that question that's always there comes to the fore. You know, why should anyone be led by you? And yeah, you can think back on experiences in your own life where you were a manager or, you know, where people sort of naturally started following you. And you may be thinking, why is everyone following me? Why is everyone doing what I say? Why is everyone listening to my opinion? And, Remember, when I say follow, I don't mean like a cult, right? I mean, they might just like, for example, I might value Steve's opinion on certain things, right? So he can be a leader in those fields, yeah? So, um, yeah, that's, that's one I think really to consider, you know, how that's been in your own life and where we might swing too much one side or the other with that.